this is, this is, this is. All right, welcome to a brand new episode of the podcast. Great to be here. Welcome, welcome. What's up, you guys? So check it out. Um, there is a lot of scandals going on in my, not in my world, but in, in my view of the world. <laughs> I'm going to act out the whole thing if you're watching on YouTube. In my view of the world, um, Russell Wilson's getting a lot of heat. He's the uh, ex-quarterback of the Seattle Seahawks, but I've been following him with the Denver Broncos, and it has not been... It has not been pretty. It has not been pretty. You know, we've got the Seahawks, my team. Uh, I'm going to go to sports for a second here. My team is not expected to win very many games. We've, we're 2-2 two and two right now. That That's a stretch. Like, I, I don't know if we'll win any more games. So we'll see what happens. But, but on the flip side of that, our quarterback, Geno Smith, has been in the league a long time. He's always been a backup guy. Now he's in the number one spot since Russell Wilson left and it took him a few, but he's actually playing really well. And it's like, I'm torn because like, I, I do want the Seahawks to lose so that we get better draft spots. We, those picks are important. You know, we need a, we're looking for an actual, you know, franchise quarterback, somebody young that'll go for a long time. So a little torn on, on the fact that Geno Smith is doing so well. It's like, why can't you do well? Like, a while back, you know, like, um, but it is what it is, you know, I, I'm kind of, you know, going back to Russell Wilson, you know, he just had what Thursday night football, <sighs> maybe it was Monday night football. I don't, yeah, it was Monday night football. And <laughs> oh my God, it was whatever it was. I can't remember if it was Monday or, or, or Thursday night, but it was Thursday night football. Um, against the Indianapolis Colts and Matt Ryan threw some picks. He didn't play that well, but they still managed to beat the Broncos. And I don't feel like it's all Russell Wilson's fault. I, I you know, I, I've talked to a lot of people about this. I've listened to some, some, some uh, takes on the Russell Wilson situation. And it feels to me like, like it's true that yes, he's playing very badly, but also the play calling has been really bad. Um, you don't even have to watch football to <laughs> to understand if you play if you call bad plays if you call plays in the wrong order that kind of thing you're not going to do well so that's what that's what seems to have been happening i i feel like with denver and a lot of those guys aren't aren't catching the ball either you know so ah russell wilson since we're on sports uh jordan pool and draymond green got in a fight those are two players from the uh the Warriors, base Bay, what is it? Uh, Bay City Warriors. <laughs> what is that? Uh, Golden State Warriors, but uh, Bay City. You see, I think of them as being from the Bay because that's where they play, and so I, so I say Bay, and I will not. I'll stop rhyming, okay? I'll stop rhyming. Uh, but those guys were in practice, and Jordan Poole was like kind of just talking shit a little bit to Damon Green, and he said some pretty insulting comments. Didn't talk about his mama or anything. He was talking about his his play. And and anyway, Draymond Green punched his own teammate. Like what? Saw a video of it just the uh, the other day on on Twitter, and I was just I couldn't believe it. Like it reminds me of of Tom and I have gotten in a few fights over the years, and we've never gotten in a full on face punching fight. We've gotten in a uh, body punching, like punch your arm, punch your chest. Never full on face punch. You know, it's always been wrestling. It's always been like trying to hold each other down and control and like, you know, stop, stop what you're, you know, shut up. <laughs> but Tom and I, you know, from the very first tour 1995 that we did it till I would say, into the 2000s to mid 2000s you know we, you know lately we we don't fight like that we're we're good we we can talk it out we can diffuse the situation we may disagree on things but we we definitely don't punch each other and and you know i, I don't i kind of i kind of look back fondly on a lot of our fights i remember one particular fight where we were in the bus and we were just on the floor, on the couch. We we're like pushing each other, jumping, you know, 
pulling, uh, yelling, insulting. And I don't remember what the fight was even about at this point, but, but everybody was just like, what, like, all the crew guys were like watching, like, whoa, 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 guys, hold on, you know. But but we weren't punching each other. We were just trying to dominate, trying to like hold. I was trying to hold him down. He was trying to push me off. And at one point he threw he threw a sock with something in it, like duct tape or something, like like a roll of gaff tape in a sock and he threw one at me <laughs> luckily it didn't hit me but um there's been a bunch of other fights we fought we were on tour uh in australia and project 86 was with us they were supporting us and uh, i just remember we were in a van together we were going out to a, a house party a friend of ours not like a woo woo house i mean it was it was pretty woo woo because we, we, we were there but uh it wasn't like a ton of people it was just like some friends at a house we had a party and we were heading there we were in Sydney and Tom and I actually it wasn't when we were heading it was it was on the way home because we were drunk you know we were all drunk and Tom and I got in a huge fight and it turned into a food fight in the middle of this van where all the other you know there's other band guys not even you know our band not even our crew are with us in the van and we had a food fight and we're just Tom's squirting mustard on me and I'm like throwing ketchup it was just insane and and Yuri Yuri we've told the story I think in Yuri <laughs> at some point you know but uh Yuri was in the back before it even happened he goes to he like leaned over to to uh Andrew from Project 86 and he goes I think the I think Tom and Mike are but gonna get in a fight I, I just have a feeling. <laughs> sure enough, it happened. So that was, uh, you know, still no no fists, no fists to the face. Speaking of fists to the face, uh, I hope you guys are uh, feeling good going into this fall, going into the, the holiday season. MXPX has some shows coming up. MXPX.com for tickets, like always. Um, November 18th at the House of Blues Chicago. That's right, we're coming back to Chicago. And the House of Blues, it's been a long time since we've been there. Can't wait to get back to that venue. There are tickets available. Please come on out. If you're worried about the 17 plus thing on the website, that's just um, new legalese kind of thing. So if you want to bring your kid, you just have to bring an adult. You have to have an adult with an underage kid. So it doesn't mean kids can't come, but they just can't come by themselves. Um, I don't know when that changed, but over the years that changed. I think once they probably had enough incidents where kids were by themselves and the parents were outside and they're like, where are your parents? They're like, oh, they left. They're going to be back to pick me up. It's like, no, get out. You know, and they kick these young kids out. It's, it's dangerous. So anyway, you can bring your kids just as long as you have an adult with them. Maybe it's you. Maybe it's, you know, when I was a kid, I went to see, uh, I went to see um, the, a pro skating show. It was, it was a show where, this is how long ago it was. I, was. I was a very young kid and it was in Seattle and my parents let my sister's friend that was a dude and he was in love with my sister, but they never dated, Jason. Um, and Jason was a maniac behind the wheel. Like he would drive as fast as he could at all possible times. So buckle up. And, but other than that, really nice guy, Jason Dietzman, <laughs> great guy. Um, still is, I haven't seen him in a really long time, but I've seen him over the years and he, he went and, and served in Iraq desert storm, the first one and in the Marines and then came back. But he took me to this skate show and we, you know, I had to, my parents were like, well, you can't go by yourself. So Jason will take you. He's an adult. He was, maybe he was an adult. He's probably over 18 at the time. I was probably like in an elementary school. Right. So, um, anyway, he takes me social distortion is playing the show. And you know how long ago this was? 
so long ago that I had no idea who social distortion was or what punk even was. Like this was, I think fifth grade was the first time I ever heard a punk song. And it was, oh, when it was a Pepsi. It was institutionalized by suicidal tendencies. And I didn't know, I thought it was like thrash metal, punk, whatever. It was like what skateboarders listen to. So that's why I heard it. Cause it was like, oh, skaters listen to this. Um, I had seen the DRI logo with like the running guy or whatever, you know, he's like a handicapped running guy. Um, but I didn't know what they sounded like. So, so this was so early on that social distortion, no idea. And it was late, you know, they were playing after the, the skate thing. So, it was Steve Caballero, Rob Roskop, um, I want to say maybe even Tony Gonzalez before he went to prison. Um, and they rode ramps, and it was great. I was just blown away. It was so cool. It was well, well before. It was, this is the 1980s, 1980s, probably the late 80s, um, mid to late 80s. Like I said, I was in elementary school, and I didn't start MXPX until 1992 when I started high school. So... Um, junior high was, you know, 89, 90, 91. And then high school was 92. Yeah. And then I graduated in 95. So early on, didn't know who social distortion was. Um, this is a long story that I didn't mean to tell while I'm trying to tell you guys to buy tickets for our MXP show in Chicago, but, um, please do. But yeah, I mean, we brought, you, you need to bring a guardian with you if you're underage. Straight up, it makes sense. And I think once people realize that, they're like, oh yeah, okay, that makes total sense why it's 17 and up. I mean, if you're 17 and up, you can go by yourself. Have a blast, have a ball. Um, get those tickets at mxpeaks.com. If you can't make Chicago on the 18th, that's a, that's a Friday night. Saturday night, the next night, is uh, the rave in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. So come on out, November 19th on Saturday night. If you're anywhere in Wisconsin, maybe you're, uh, you're a big... Green Bay Packers fan, come on out, talk football. Thomas Ness, Gary Guitar Player, is a huge fan of just talking football. He does the, the fantasy leagues and all that. I've done the fantasy leagues here and there, but I really don't, I haven't done it in a, in a couple of years. Ever since back in the day, I don't know if there's any listeners out there that remember we did a fantasy football um, league kind of thing. Like, for the podcast, for the podcast listeners on FanDuel. When FanDuel started, FanDuel is like a huge company now, but when it started, they hired a bunch of podcasts, not just mine, to do different leagues with their listeners. And I did one of those. And it was fun because I had uh, I had a buddy of mine on to talk football. And Ed Irvin, he, he was like my expert guy. Um, I've been thinking lately uh, about doing something, you know, doing like a, a new segment on the podcast. But but at the same time, you know, it's uh it's it. You know, I'm not spending I'm not spending a ton of time, you know, working on ideas for the podcast. I'm just either doing a voicemail episode or a guest and we go for it and we do it. But if you guys want to see something else, I'd I'd love some suggestions. The best place to do that is to go to my Facebook group on uh on facebook it's called my career podcast facebook group go there comment there i'll see that comment on this you know the comments for this episode and i know most of you aren't going to do that almost nobody's going to do that maybe one or two people but those are the people that i'm going to listen to all right hit me up um you can always hit me up on instagram or on twitter as well um and on, on my personal socials as well you don't have to do it on the actual my career, but you know, the odds are better that I see it. If you just go to the Facebook group on the podcast, it's such a small group of people. It's like three or 4,000 and it's easier, you know? And you know, the only thing I have to do is, is, uh, now and again, I'll, I'll sign on to my, my Facebook group and see that there's a bunch of spam posts and I have to like go through to block user, delete, you know, delete posts, blah, blah, blah. You know, it's all these like people just trying to like either, promote some random band that I've never heard of or some couch cushion product or something. It's so super weird, but that's, that's the world we're living in on social media is like getting through all the spam and, and the spam is now not just companies, it's people, people are spammy. And so, 
Um, which is a big reason why MXPX is sort of really kind of laid back on our social media. We're trying to like just put positivity out there, put fun stuff out there. Um, I don't know if it's working, to be honest. It's kind of like pissing in the wind, but but um, it's kind of fun to do. So, uh, you know, at least we got that going for us, just just the lifestyle type posts and, and th stuff like that. But uh, MXPX.com, MXPX.com is the place if you want to support the podcast, if you want to support MXPX, you want to support my solo stuff, it all works because uh, MXPX is sort of the, the crux of of everything that I do here. So appreciate you guys. Um, let's get to it. Voicemails. Let's get to some voicemails. Here we go. Hey, what's up, Mike? My name is Cyrus. Uh, second time calling in here. Had, had a few questions for you, uh, hoping I can get your input on these. First off, um, looking at the MXPX Arsenal, and I noticed all the uh, test presses for the vinyls. Um, I was wondering, how different are those from the official vinyl releases in the box set? Um, I feel like, you know, at some point in my life, I need to own Before Everything and After on vinyl, one of my favorite albums. Um, and if that means getting a test press, you know, I'm all for that. Um, so I'm just kind of curious what differences are they, maybe lower quality or, you know, like no artwork, something like that. Um, so maybe you can help me with that. And also... Okay, I'm going to pause there. Um, so your question is, how different are the test pressings for the box set from the actual box set artwork and records and all that? So pretty easy. Test pressings are just something that you get made to test your record before you manufacture all of the records the right way. So test pressings don't have the same artwork. They have a, a generic sticker usually. Um, some people get fancier with it in, in print stuff, but usually you just get the manufacturer sticker on there and then you have it written, you know, whatever it is, MXPX, whatever, oh, before everything and after is what you wanted. So before everything and after, and um, it just comes in a blank sleeve I think there's a sticker on it, uh, on the sleeve. And, you know, there's been releases where we've had other stuff, but the, the, the box set test pressings are legit test pressings. They're exactly what we get to listen. So um, we just ordered extra so that we'd have extra to sell, I think. But um, I think, you know, some people like, like their test pressings to be like a full new release and other people don't care. Um, some people like, and, and then, and I think even other people prefer a test pressing to be a true legit test pressing, not like some product that's, that's made. So we've done both to be honest. I mean, I, I don't, I don't dislike either. I like both. So um, yeah, this one though is just, straight up and, and and sometimes when people will print out their own kind of version of of their the album and they'll stick it in or or put the record in its own you know a new sleeve um but hey that's that's for that's people love that stuff that's great i, I like it when people kind of like customize their their collections and and um to me that that just that's like what i do with my my bass guitars you know i don't I don't just pull my Ernie Ball bass out of the, the case and start playing it. I, I make sure it's tuned right. I make sure the, the action is, is the right length and, and you know, all of that, right? So make sure the right strings are on it. So it's like that, you know? It's like sometimes you just want to mess with stuff. But for the most part, anything you buy from, from MXPX, like merch-wise, is going to be ready to go right at the gate. Open it up, put it on the record player, or open it up, put it on, wear it. Um, we have a lot coming for this fall, so I hope you guys are, are ready because we have been working on, on stuff for a while. So that being said, we're not ready. We're not ready yet. Uh, soon, soon. Um, let's get to the next part of your question. Great question though. It's a nice little question for you. Um, go, going back in all of your, uh, 10 albums, uh, or maybe even the B-side albums, what are some songs that don't have music videos that you wish could have you could have done a music video for or maybe one you would have just liked to see for me personally my top picks would probably be um party my house be there on the outs and waiting for the world to end but um are there any songs that you think you would have liked to do videos for 
Um, so yeah, that's it. Thank you uh, for everything, uh, for all the music. I uh, love it and can't wait for the new album. Take care. Bye. Thanks, Cyrus. Um, waiting for the world to end is a good one. That's a good call. Let's go. Let's go album to album. Let's let's see our, our first album, Poking at You. We have Want Ad, and is there anything else? No, we're good. I mean, sure, we we probably like if we were doing that album today, we would have, you know, maybe maybe another you know a, another like performance video or something. Anyway, I'm just thinking about it. Teenage Politics, we did a lot of songs off that record, so maybe I won't choose any more, but um, we did Punk Rock Show, Teenage Politics, um, do, do, no, that's it, Life in General. Um, we did uh, Money Tree. We did, that's it? That might be it. Yeah, so we did a lot of songs on that record, but um, going forward to Life in General, same deal, a lot of songs we did, Moved to Bremerton, Chick Magnet, doing time um and then next album buffalo what did we do we did i'm okay you're okay um that was a weird record because it was such a popular record but it wasn't a a radio friendly kind of record but i would say off buffalo we should have done i mean again you're right party my house be there right like, that would have been a great one. Also, um, Under Lock and Key, although it's just so hard to sing that song. Maybe that's not the, the best. Um, it'd be hard to lip sync that song for the video, too. Um, something crazy, something strange about the way I'm lazy and how I go about giving my time and how I reason. All the problems I've been doing how I reason. It's hard, it's hard to, to really say that. Um, and the next part's even harder. Um, okay, going forward. Buffalo... Oh, yeah, Buffalo, um, Before Everything and After. Oh, sorry, The Ever Passing Moment. Um, we did, we should have done My Life Story. That was a no-brainer. It has a story to it. It would have been so great, right? Like, that. that's the big one off of that record that we, that should have been a single. Um, responsibility, we love. I mean, we love that video. It's so much fun. Uh, filmed it at a golf course, and, and George Went is the, the boss, and we're the caddies. But... We really, really should have done a video for My Life Story. That's a big one for me. Um, before Everything and After, we did a video for Everything Sucks with you, When You're Gone or With You Gone. I don't even remember the name of the title. Everything Sucks. Um, <laughs> we still play that song today, too. Um, play It Loud. I think Play It Loud should have gotten a video. That would have been great. Um, kind of a rolling, a rolling strong kind of song, Play It Loud is. And what else? Um, a couple. There's a couple other ones on that re that record that could. Um, first day of the rest of. First day of the rest of our lives. That that could have been good. Um, moving on before I think after. Then it goes to Panic. Um, we did Darkest Places. We did Wreck in Hotel Rooms. No, we didn't do Darkest Places, did we? We did Wreck in Hotel Rooms, which is, it was just, it was just hard. We did Heard That Sound and Wreck in Hotel Rooms. But we should have done, those were really weird years for us making videos. One, my look. <laughs> I was told, hey, no one will see the makeup. It's just like movie makeup. It'll just make you look better. I, I shouldn't have believed them. Because you know, you see me and I look like Robert Smith from The Cure. <laughs> hey, we can all laugh at ourselves. We all we've all been there, right? Right? Huh? Huh? But um, something off Panic that we didn't do that I would have wanted us to do. I guess Waiting for the World to End. That was that one. And Darkest Places. That would have been a great video too. Like just like in the in the camera, like doing the remote on the second verse, like. Pushing all the buttons till your fingers bleed, you know. Um, and then comes, pa that's Panic. And then comes Secret Weapon. <clears throat> we did Secret Weapon, which was a great video. We did Shut It Down. Uh, really cool performance video. 
you know, there's a few other things, but um, is there any other video from that? I think it's just those two. What else? I mean, Secret Weapon is, it's really the song off of Secret Weapon. Um, there's a couple other songs I really dig, but but yeah, that honestly, there's nothing that I feel like, oh no, we should have made a video for this. So, moving on, um, Plans Within Plans. Are you guys impressed that I can remember our records in order? Uh, Plans Within Plans, we did Far Away. And was that it? I think that was it. Um, oh, Ace is Up. Far Away, Ace is Up. Yeah, I would have said Ace is Up, but we did a video for it. So if you haven't seen it, go check it out. Brian Bouchelt directed it. Looks great. It's kind of a move to Bremerton part two. It has those vibes. Uh, going from Seattle to Bremerton, but we don't really make it to Bremerton, but uh, you get the idea. Um, and, okay, so that was Plans Within Plans, and then we released Self-Titled. Wow. And we did a video for every song. Not every song. We did a video for every song, but a couple of those videos were lyric videos um still counted because they were really really cool but people don't really watch lyric videos so much um they watch the real videos usually more but um yeah we did you know i can't really say much about self-titled since we uh, we we actually we nailed that one pretty well let's ride is is probably our most popular video most popular song right now um on youtube and has the most plays, which is insane. But also, you know, we we were kind of in that weird spot with YouTube and, and social media with MXPX that we just didn't get tons of play. Like, we definitely have way more fans than than we have views on, on our videos, which is crazy. But that's life, right? What are you going to do? Cyrus, great call. Let's move on. Let's get to the next call. Hey, Mike. My name's Adam. Uh, living in the Bay Area now, originally from the Seattle area. Actually saw MXPX play up at uh, Bumbershoot, probably mid to late 90s at the Seattle Center, uh, which unfortunately was the only time I've seen MXPX so far, but hoping to catch you guys next time you're in or around the Bay Area. But anyway, one of the questions I was curious to hear you talk about on the podcast, uh, which I'm loving, by the way, um, is, is about set lists. And I'd love to kind of hear a little bit about, like, you know, how does MXPX put together set lists? What goes into that? How do you guys kind of decide, you know, what songs you want to sing and, and which songs you guys want to kind of, you know, repeat time and time again? And at what point do you kind of, like, does a song drop off a set list? And I'm uh, just kind of curious about that, you know, as a, as a uh, you know, audience member going to see shows. You know, I just love to see bands that I like play, I don't really care necessarily personally if they're playing, you know, the quote-unquote hits or whatever. I just like to see bands that I enjoy get up there and, and do what they like. But I also know there's kind of this push and pull with, with any band about, you know, playing the songs that they know the crowd wants to hear versus, you know, maybe newer stuff that uh, they're excited about and they want to kind of get out there. And, and I'd just kind of be curious to hear from your perspective, especially as a band that's been around for a long time, you know, about kind of that dynamic of, you know, playing some of those songs that, you know, maybe, to be honest, you might be sick of, of playing, <laughs> but, uh, you know, and, and how you kind of work in new stuff that you like. So, anyway, I'd uh, love to hear hear a little bit about that, and I'm um, enjoying the show, and like I said, look forward to seeing MXPX sometime soon, and uh, we'll talk to you later. Right, thanks. Bye. Thanks, Adam. So, setlist, man, yeah, the... Uh that's a great question because there's so many different ways to do it. And I'll just kind of talk a little bit about how we've done it in the past and how we're doing it these days. Um, so back in the day, it was just how many songs do you have? Do you have enough songs? And then you usually put like your best song first and your, your second best song last or vice versa. Maybe it's your second best song first and your, your best song last. You want to leave them, you know, wanting more. Um, and then you just fill it in. And and from there, you know, it went it went on to like, okay, 
um, what kind of audience are we doing? Like if we were at like a real, I remember back in the day, like we'd be like, okay, we're playing with this like real punk band. They're super fast. Their fans really like fast stuff. So we just put a lot of fast stuff in there, you know, on the set list and, and just jam it out. And sometimes you're, if you're like, we'd be playing with like a simple plan or Reliant K or somebody like that. And we'd be like, okay, their fans are a little less punk than, you know, the average. So I don't mean that in a bad way. I just mean like, usually like it would be like younger girls that are new to the genre or new to music in general. Right. And, and so we would just, we would add in some of the more mid tempo stuff, some of the pop stuff. Like in everything sucks when you got when you're gone or uh, you know I'm okay you're okay things like that um, you know so and that still kind of applies but not in the same way um, nowadays so so like if we're doing if we're doing like a smaller club like the Troubadour and we're doing like multiple nights we're gonna we're gonna play a lot more obscure stuff probably because. Not as many people are going to see it, for one. So it's going to be like, okay, I saw a special show. But if you're playing like a big festival, you're going to like uh, whatever it is, you know, just you're, you're playing to a bunch of people that aren't normally at an MXPX show. They're like, I'm here at this festival. I've been wanting to see MXPX, but I just, you know, I didn't want to want to pay for a ticket or whatever. Uh, but I'm here at this festival, so I'm going to go see them. And so for those kinds of set lists, you want to play the hits. You want to play stuff people are more are going to recognize more and be like oh i remember this band you know it's like so there's a psychology to it but in general in general you want you want to hit them you know with something exciting to start the show you want to hit them real quick with a bunch of songs that that you know you can play well and you feel like is very you as a band or as an artist. And, and then usually you can transition into bringing the crowd into some stuff. You can transition into like doing a ballad, do some, do something slower, tell a story. It depends on what kind of show you're trying to do. Um, but, but there is a flow that happens at a show and, and people just naturally have attention spans that change. So if you're hitting them all fast exciting songs after a while that fast and exciting thing is going to get old you know so you have to bring it down and you have to bring it to a different a different tone a different beat a different tempo a uh, different lighting mood all of these things are used to change it up you know so i i think just just it's important to just change it up a few times during the set that's you know it's it's uh it's something that everybody does but not everybody does well right um, maybe not everybody even understands that it's important to do and you know we go as far as to make sure that songs flow in t in and out of each other so like um, Tom does this thing before every show Tom our guitar player. We huddle up as a band we get backstage, or usually, usually it's backstage in the dressing room. We huddle up. Tom's got a set list, and he goes through each set. And he's not, like, going through each song. He's going through the, the, the intro and the outro of each song. Okay, that goes into that, that goes into that. You know, like, so it's like that, hi-hat there, um, Mike starts that one, Yuri starts that one, Tom starts, you know, whatever it is. He's like, do this, this. So we all, all have it in our minds how we're flowing from each song to the next. It doesn't always go as planned. I mean, there's definitely audibles that are called and there's things that change and things that don't go as planned. But the more you try to set it set it up in your set list, I think the better off you're going to be and the more consistent you're going to be because, um, you know, believe it or not, consistency is a good thing in music. And I know a lot of people want to see the band mess up or see i want to see yuri drop a stick or something like that and that happens from time to time where we'll mess something up and sometimes it's really bad but usually we get through a set and we've played it pretty good pretty pretty fine and you know and and, and it's usually just like a few words or whatever but that's just i i would almost everybody i've ever seen live has messed up a word or two um, there's, there's exceptions. There's some really crazy, really amazing performers, but I always like think to myself, like 
how how perfect do I need to be? And and I I think it's important to be to strive to be perfect as a performer. And I know I'm never going to get perfect, but the more I concentrate on each part that I'm doing, the better I'm going to be. I know I'm a little in the weeds on the set list topic, but going back to set lists, you know, knowing your audience is really important. Knowing who's going to be there or who you think is going to be there um, in general, like the type of club or venue you're playing. It doesn't have to be a club. It could be like a coffee shop. You might do a different kind of set than you would do at the Enormo Dome right? Just, you're not going to be in the coffee shop going, all right, everybody, I want on five, one, two, three, four, five, clap your hands. Why did I count to five? I have no idea. It's supposed to be four. So you know what I'm saying? Like, you're not going to be doing that at a coffee shop. You're going to be like, hey, thank you guys so much for coming out to this coffee shop performance. I really feel important i feel important that you showed up and you're spending your time here with me you know things like that right like like i said like i said everybody's got a different show but it's kind of ridiculous to see or to hear a front man or front woman going crazy in a tiny tiny venue when the people are right there you don't need to yell at them you know so like the arena thing doesn't go everywhere and and at the same time if you're in an if you're in an arena, you shouldn't be chill. You shouldn't be just like, thanks guys. Um, all right, this next song is about clowns, you know. So <laughs> you get it, and, and that's the thing. It's like, okay, if that's your act and everybody loves it, you can probably do that in an arena. Sure, sure, just go for it. But. I just, you get my point, right, in general? All right, moving on. Thanks for your call, Adam. That was great. Hey, Mike, this is Manuel from Chicago. Uh, I just want to tell you I appreciate all your music, um, all that you do, all the MXPX does. I just really appreciate it. You're the reason why I started playing bass. Um, but. Uh, but? Quick question. Um, cool. I was there at the 2016 um, concert in the Troubadour in Hollywood. Um, is there any stories or crazy stories or fun stories that you have from that time? Um, I'd love to hear about it. Thanks, Mike. Bye. Manuel, man, thank you. Um, thanks for calling. Yeah, Troubadour. I was just talking about the Troubadour. Um a story from the Troubadour. Those shows were great. Like, that was the beginning of, of, like, okay, we're, we're a band, you know, we're, like, a band, we're having fun doing this. We had done some shows before that, for sure. Um, I think 2014 was, was sort of, like, when we kind of came back together and, and started doing more than just, like, one show a year. Um, and then, we did the Troubadour, which was like a big leap of faith for us because we, you know, we were we were trying a lot of new things and then doing three shows, you know, and in one venue. We hadn't really done that. So, I mean, that was just like the beginning of, of a, the go, a golden, a golden era of MXPX, not the golden era. Uh, I'd say we've had m multiples, but, <laughs> but, uh, a story from that show from, well, I had, um, what was his name? What was it? <laughs> the singer, his name, what's the country guy's name from The Voice? Um, the so you've been running your Shopify store for a while now and you've oh, been geez. installing what Shopify apps on? here and sorry, there. Sorry, and sorry, sorry, as sorry. time goes by, you decided to clean up your... My bad. Um, I'm closing that YouTube. Hey. This is a real show right now. I don't have a producer. I'm just looking up um, the voice judges because I can't remember the guy's name. Oh, yeah, duh. All right, Blake Shelton. Um, Blake Shelton has a guitar that sits in the place where we rent our back line. And he, he plays Takamini. And so... 
when I go to shows, not every show, but a lot of times I'll go to a show and I'll rent a guitar. I'll get a guitar from Takamini to use so that I'm using because I'm sponsored by Takamini. And the guitar I happened to get was Blake Shelton's. And, and they're like, just don't screw it up, please. Just like, I'm like, what am I going to do? Smash it, <laughs> you know? But I ended, I ended up not knowing that later on that evening, before, you know, when the show was just getting started, right before uh, Chris Rowe went on, I went down the line in, in, with the guitar, and I was singing, doing time for the ticket line as people were waiting, because these shows have been sold out. Like, they sold out day one, back when tickets sold out day one. I mean, it's a different day and age now, but... Uh, yeah, it, it was, uh, I had the guitar and everybody was just blown away that I was just like there playing guitar for them. And I just remember that was a really cool, a cool situation. And so I played all the way up, went through the front doors, onto stage, said, hey guys, and played another song. And then went on my way. But yeah, it was just like doing weird things like that. That wasn't planned at all. It was just done. It was, we just did it. And, and um, I love being spontaneous. And I think that's why I screw up so much on the business end of things, you know, with my planning and with my um, trying to get things ready to go with marketing and promo and, and anything like that. It's just, it's hard because as an artist, I just want to be spontaneous. I just want to think of something and do it and then be done with it, you know, and, and um Maybe that's why live shows are so great because it's so spontaneous and it's it can never be truly captured. You know, if you if you haven't already heard, we have an album, a live album that we released um, late last year, and we released vinyl for it early this year. We still have vinyl in the web store if you want it. Southbound to San Antonio. Um, it's a live album. It captures the show amazingly, but at the same time, it's. You know, you weren't there, you know, maybe you were there actually, but, but if you weren't there, it's not going to be exactly the same. Even if you were there, you, you have a, a memory of being there and then you have the album and we're trying to get as close as we can with a live album to being there, but it's never going to fully be exact, is it? I mean, that's just, it's impossible until, until, I mean, if it was exact, it would be fake. It would be like, we put on some goggles, some VR goggles, and now we're seeing the band, whoa, and if we could hear exactly how it sounds in the hall, I, I don't think that's possible because there's, you know, there's so much air being pushed off stage when you have an actual big PA pushing sound in a band playing live. It's not the same as if you just like push play on a CD and it goes through, I'm talking CDs, but uh, MP3, whatever. Uh, goes through the PA and then it plays back. It still sounds loud. It sounds great, but it doesn't sound as real. You know, there is a difference. And so being spontaneous is very important to me. And sometimes my business can, can suffer from that. Um, and I think this podcast is a perfect uh, example of that. You know, I definitely am spontaneous with this podcast and bad at planning. I'll admit that's that's a mark on me, I'll admit. All right, next caller. Thanks for your call, uh, Manuel. Appreciate it. Hey, hey, hey! It's your best friend, Mike. It's uh, Travis from Virginia, and I totally don't think you're full of bullshit all the time. I actually was impressed with your photogenic memory. But actually, I have another question for you. I actually already know the answer. My boyfriend's back. Mm. That is not a cover that you did, right? Because it's all over the place. Like in XBX, my boyfriend's back and you're gonna be in trouble. That's not you guys, right? No. Tell me it's not. Actually, I don't mind it if it is. But Everybody knows. I'm pretty it's not. sure it's it's not your voice, but so that's my question, man. Peace, love, and harmony. Thanks, Travis. Um, all right, Trav. My boyfriend's back. Who did that song? You're, you're going to... I want to say Bracket. Bracket did it. And and and, uh, and then later on, Me First in the Gimme Gimmies. My boyfriend's back. It's a great song. It's like a, like a, a 50s kind of doo-wop. 
Motown kind of song. I love that song. Great song. Bracket, great band. They're back recently. They've been back on social media. If you've ever been into that band, I would check them out again because they're 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 kind of like probably going to be making a new record or already did and doing shows and things like that, um, which is exciting because I've always been a fan. You know, we, we brought them on tour. I think the last voice voicemail episode 429, uh, Ghost Walk With Me. Uh, hopefully you listen to that episode. If you didn't, go listen to it after this. Um, that episode had a, a lot of stories, and one of the stories was about Canada, I think, in bracket. And um, my finger. Whew. Playing with my fingers back then. Anyway, I could be wrong. Maybe it's nowhere in that that episode, but I, but I definitely had that conversation with somebody. Um, Travis. Yeah. My boyfriend. My boyfriend's back. Yeah, we didn't do it. You had the right call. Thanks, buddy. Thanks for calling in. Hey, uh, uh, Mike, this is uh, Josh Jones, uh, currently living in uh, Silverdale, Washington. I've uh, been a big, big fan of the band ever since I picked up the Life mm-hmm. in General cassette. Oh, uh, yeah. There we the go. Local That's Christian cool. Bookstore uh, years ago. Yeah. Uh, I've got a couple of questions for you. First off um, is I was wondering if there was any chance uh, of some sort of message board coming back. Uh, I don't know we have the, the Facebook page and everything, which is great, but um, the those those uh, days on the message boards I thought were um, really awesome, being able to um, communicate with fans all over the place. Um, and then um, I was wondering if you'd ever considered doing like a, a special um, podcast with uh, your dip, your fans from around the world, like listening to their stories about you know how they came to uh, you know to find you, like what their thoughts were, you know different shows, experiences, things like that. Um, and then if you have time, I just want to say one of my favorite memories uh, of the band because there's a lot of them out there. Uh, but you guys did a show uh, a couple of years ago. Um, when the self-titled was coming out right before a Seattle show, you did a local show at um, the Minette in Bremerton, and um, we got to come up and sing, and I sang a song with you guys. And that that was that was awesome. That was, um, I think, one of um, the highlights of, of uh, my life, one of the coolest things I've been able to do. Um, and I was wondering if you guys were looking into doing anything like that again. Um, yeah. Yeah, uh, just to wrap this up, again, yeah, thanks for what you guys do. Um, you've been my favorite band since I was a little kid. Um, and uh, looking forward, I know you guys got stuff coming up soon. Looking forward to it. Thanks. Bye. What up, Josh? Yeah, dude, thanks for calling. Thanks for, for, for your time. I have something I need to show you. So one second, it will take one second. So just don't pause. Just, just do it. All right, all right. Here we go. Here we go. Look at this. So I saw Josh. I saw Josh at the Teenage Bottle Rocket show in Bremerton um, over the summer, and it was in August, I think. And boom, it might have been the urethane show, but it was one of those shows. And now you're like, what is that? What is that? It's a ship pen. So it's got all these like ships that he's been on on it. And then on the other side, boom. An MXPX themed um, assistant navigator, Joshua Jones. So uh, Josh actually asked me for permission before he had these made. I was like, yeah, go ahead and put the Pokemon at your punk on there. So anyway, he gave us each one of these, each of the band guys, and I appreciate it, Josh. I appreciate it. So thank you. Um, message board. Yeah, that's just something that changes with the times. I mean, I, I, I miss it too. I wish we still had the message board, but I also know that when we took the message board down, nobody was using it. It was a ghost town. It was, it was just empty all the time, and 
if people were just constantly using it still, which I don't blame them for not, because at that point it was the social media boom was happening. Everybody was on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, whatever it was, uh, MySpace, right? Um, and it just wasn't being used. So yeah, if the world changes again, well, the world's always changing, right? Like things are not good in social media land right now. Nobody's using the platforms as much. Um, I mean, we're still posting there, but nobody sees it because they just block who, you know, they like have a, a tight clamp on, on the information. It doesn't go anywhere. And yeah, it sounds whiny, honestly, you know, it is what it is. Everybody's dealing with this, right? Um, it doesn't mean it's not true and it's not hard, but um, we don't know what's going to happen. We, we're trying to find, we're trying to find you guys. We're trying to, you know, a, a lot happens. A lot of problems happen. Like, um, you know, like we'll try to do ads to sell tickets and then the ad doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't work. And so we're like, what? And then like two weeks later, it turns on and starts working. But by then you've, you can't, just doesn't work, you know, like telling people buy tickets today, but nobody sees that, that kind of stuff happening. So, I mean, there's problems that happen, uh, you know, that have happened throughout the years and, and are still happening right now. Um, and new problems will arise and that's just the way it is. So if we can figure out where people want to be and we can all meet each other there and start a, a message book or a message book, a message board you know, there, you know, we, we definitely are gonna, you know, uh, redesign mxpeaks.com. That's going to happen again. Um, every few years you need to, it gets old and things start breaking. And, um, by the way, I fixed something. Uh, the store should be fixed on mxpeaks.com. Um, if you've ever gotten a spinning wheel of death, that should be no longer. Let me know if it still happens, but, but, um, I deleted a couple apps that were problems. So, you know me, just getting into our website back end and deleting code and apps and blah, blah, blah. Who knows? You know, it's like I, I have no business being a web guy. I am a, I'm a bass player. But, you know, in, the, in today I'm a, I'm a lot of things. I'm an editor. I'm a, a video guy. I'm a, <laughs> you know, audio engineer, a podcaster, uh, a writer and a, a songwriter and, and uh Hey, I love it. I love, you know, I still love doing MXPX, that's for sure. Um, and I should embrace failing more, but I feel like it's not me failing. It's like the algorithm failing, that kind of thing. So it's like out of your hands. So when you fail when it's not in your hands, it's kind of, it's different, right? But um, but the message board is just something that changed because the times changed and, and we we would love to have a central place. You know, maybe we put a message board right on mxpeaks.com, but is anybody going to use it? I, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. Let me know. If I get more than two comments about this situation, then uh, maybe uh, maybe people are, care about it, you know. Um, certainly you care, Josh, and I appreciate it. And and I, I always appreciate uh, everything that you, all your support over these years. And there's a lot of, of you uh, of people like you, <laughs> not just a lot. There's not a lot of you. The people aren't cloning Josh, but uh, what I mean is, there's a lot of just like diehard fans that have been around and and have seen a lot of changes. And we're back, you know, on the message boards back in those days. So, uh, podcast with fans. I feel like I'm doing it right now, except for they can't respond back to me in real time. And I feel like that's the only difference in what I'm doing with the voicemail episodes versus having an actual podcast with fans um but yes we will do something like that at some point absolutely if you want to be part of it let me know all right last thing you talked about the manette show that was so much fun and we we had that was our 25 year summertime show um we had two shows in seattle at the show box and then we had one show in bremerton leading up to it and that, it wasn't really a real show. It's such a small place and it's 21 and over. So it wasn't like a real show. It was meant to be different. And so we brought all our friends, we invited a bunch of people and uh, it was open to the public, you know, if they could get tickets. And we had, 
people sign up, fans sign up, friends sign up, and everybody sang a bunch of songs all night long, and that was that was a lot of fun. And we, I would love to do it again someday, something like it, you know. All right, Josh, we've we've uh, we spent a lot of time together on this call. I appreciate you. I'm gonna move on. Let's do one more, and then uh, and I'll let you guys go. All right. Thank you so much. Here we go. Hey, Mike. Uh, my name is MJ. I'm from Denver, Colorado. I play in a band called Citra. And I was just wondering, what bass heads have you used over the last 20 years or so, uh, playing bass in MXPX? And what current bass head do you use now? Uh, I'm just kind of curious to see what you like. Uh, your tone's always been kind of legendary and just, yeah, want to know more about it. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, great. I love talking gear. Um, MJ, Denver. And your band's called Citra, I think is what you say, Citra. Um, you can always call back, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, bass amps over the years. Let's go Let's go as far as back, far back as I can remember. Um, I got, aside from a Gorilla, a Gorilla amp, like a Gorilla, what is it called, Gorilla amp? Or something like that. It was like a little practice amp. I got a PV amp back in the day. And then when I finally like, bought a real bass amp i went to like american music in in seattle and i bought a fender combo it was like it was just like a fender bass man combo or something like that and it was about waist high it was like almost a half cab you know it was it was cool and that thing sounded really bright and clear and cool and 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 then i moved on from that i had a i had a um galian kruger for a long time one of the old ones. Um, those those sounded really solid and really like clean. And but on tour, I, I remember it was on. I had that sh amp on my very first tour in '95, and it just crapped out on me. Um, and so I went from there. Steve Kravak was like, we were making life in general, and he was like looking through the. Hollywood Recycler, I think it was called the Recycler. And it has a bunch of like personal ads, people selling stuff. And somebody was selling an Ampeg classic head. And he's like, oh, Mike, you want to get this. This is this is perfect for punk rock. It's perfect for rock and roll. This is a great head, you know, because I was looking for something. And sure enough, I called the guy, went over, got the head. I ended up having that that classic Ampeg head. I still have it. It's downstairs, I think. It just sounds like... <sighs> I think I used it for Get Me Out or something off of Panic or or Plans Within Plans. I used, I, I used that amp just as is, and it sounds completely distorted, like I'm using a distortion pedal. It's crazy. I love it. Um, but yeah, I, I covered that thing. I, I modded that thing. I covered it in leopard print, and and I had it on tour for years and years and years. Finally, upgraded, got got uh, endorsed by Ampeg. Um, shout out to Doc, uh, Steve Doc Raiden, uh, in St. Louis. Um, great guy, bar owner now. Uh, but anyway, he uh, hooked me up. We got we got a, an endorsement with Ampeg, and and. I used Ampeg for years and years and years and years. I still use Ampeg for some stuff. Um, but the Ampeg uh, SVT4 Pro, great. I record with those a lot. I, I record those actually all the time. I use them in practice sometimes. Um, love those amps. Um, the new, new, new Ampeg stuff, I honestly don't like. I don't think it's good. Um, it's decent, but it's just not made as well. It's made with lesser materials by probably lesser factory workers i don't know what it is it's just not as good so um i've moved on from from ampeg as far as like being endorsed once once they changed their they weren't being made in america anymore i switched out not that like that's the thing but i was like well you know I, i'm gonna just move on so i moved on and i didn't really have i wasn't i wasn't really even endorsed for base amps for a long time, but I used uh, a bunch of different things. Went back to GK at one point, almost was talking to the to one of the guys from GK about about a deal, and then I just eh, I'm like I'm good. Not that I don't like their amps, I do. I really like their amps, but I kind of just like not being 
uh, not being tied down on the amp side of things because of how hard it is to get some, certain amps in different parts of the world. And I can bring my bass everywhere, Ernie Ball, all the way, you know, so like that's something I can commit to, but I just didn't feel, I didn't feel like I could commit to always using one type of head, bass head. Um, although uh, we are endorsed by Orange amplifiers, and so guitar stuff, bass stuff, we use a lot of Orange, we use their cabinets a lot, and love their products, they sound amazing, um, really, really great stuff. And, and then... Kemper, we also use Kemper, um, mostly just um, for flyout stuff because it makes it a lot more consistent. Now we don't record with Kempers, you know, we, we record with real amps and, and do that. But but yeah, it's it just depends. You know, you gotta use the right tool for the right job. And uh, I have a little bass thing right now. It's called it's an orange little bass thing. Hold on. So yeah, um, this is actually the head that I use for flyouts. I this goes into our gear, and and it's just so light, which is great. And it's got these speak ons, which I actually need to get these repaired um, with some different speak ons, modding things again. Um, but aside from that, this thing's this thing's pretty solid. I, I dig it. Um, it's called Orange little bass thing cool so that's what i'm using right now um for flying out and doing shows and then for di i use uh, a rupert neve di their bass di sounds amazing uh can't recommend it enough uh, not sponsored by them at all just a, you know just a just a product that i use a tool that i use um yeah, so I mean, with my Ernie Ball Music Man Stingrays, which I have my signature series still, by the way. So, here's my signature series. Here's the original. The original's got that big sort of gouge out of it. You can see right there. Oh, right there. See that? Yeah, that's the original. That's how you tell. And then, uh, boom, it's got the custom signature series plate on the back. All right. I guess I'm proud of that thing. After, after a, a couple years, I'm still proud to have a signature bass guitar. Like, it's just, sometimes I have to pinch myself, sometimes I have to, like, sit back and go, wait, is that, do I really have a signature bass guitar from Ernie Ball? Yeah, yeah, pretty amazing. So thank you, anybody that's bought one, thank you so much. It really is uh, a good cause. It goes to uh, Music Cares and, or, uh, you know, some of the profits go to Music Cares, not all of the profits. Um, but, you know, it's it's great. You know, it's uh, it's something that I feel like Ha gives me a little bit of legitimacy in the world, right? Like, if you're, like, wondering, like, what have you done? I don't know what I've really done. I've written a couple songs. I've got a signature bass. Done. Sold. You got me. You had me, but you got me. So anyway, yeah, I'm just, at this point, I'm just blabbing. But thank you so much for your call, MJ. And anybody else that wants to call in, please do. We need some more voicemails. So please call 360 830-6660. Maybe you have a question. You want me to talk about set lists or amps or whatever, you know, I'll, I'll do it. Um, obviously, I know more about punk rock and I know more about music and, and instruments and gear and stuff like that. But I know matters of the heart. You know, you could ask me something more serious. Maybe, maybe even political. I don't know if you want to get into that. Most people on this podcast... We used to be political a long time ago, and I've kind of gotten away from that uh, in favor of the more evergreen type material, stuff that's not going to age. But um, whatever you want to talk about, that's my point. That's my point. Uh, shout out to Bob McKnight. Check out his podcast, The Bob and Katie Show. 
a lot of butt stuff, but it is technically okay for most children to listen to, I think. I'm not sure, actually, at this point. Maybe it's gone way downhill in an uphill kind of fun way. Um, but anyway, he's, uh, he's my producer and helps edit this thing and gets it, gets it going every week for me. So thank you, Bob. Uh, thank you guys for listening. MXPX.com. Come out to Chicago, November 18th. Come on out to Milwaukee, Wisconsin, November 19th. Would love to see you guys and stay tuned for more. All right. Check back soon. Peace. <laughs>